Welcome to another episode of Grammar is Power, Answer Key Edition. This video explains the answers to exercise one in the adjective clauses and punctuation unit. Let's get to it. Number one, Natasha is the subject of the action verb begins because who is the subject of befriends in the relative clause. Who later befriends Clint provides extra information about Natasha, so it is non-restrictive and needs commas on both sides. As a spy tells which career, so it's an adjectival prep phrase, while at an early age tells when she begins it, so it is adverbial. Number two. The appositive scientist provides extra information about Dr. Frankenstein, so it is non-restrictive and needs commas on both sides. This appositive is modified by a restrictive relative clause, however, so we don't put the comma between the appositive and its dependent clause. It goes at the end of the entire appositive, the main word, and all its modifiers including a clause. Remember that relative clauses can modify any noun or pronoun in the sentence, including appositives and objects of prepositions. To life is a prepositional phrase, telling how or in what manner he brought it. If you aren't sure of the question, check the noun in front of the prepositional phrase. To life clearly isn't telling which one or what kind of corpse. Number three. In a subterranean labyrinth is adverbial, telling where he lives. Its object is modified by the relative clause beginning with the pronoun which. This clause is non-restrictive, adding extra but non-essential information about the labyrinth. If you're not sure, look at the use of the indefinite article A. It could be any labyrinth. Therefore, commas on both sides of this dependent clause. The sentence continues with another independent clause. Since the two are joined by the coordinating conjunction so, we need a comma to avoid a run-on. We already have a comma for the preceding restrictive relative clause, so we can continue. The second relative clause modifies the direct object in the independent clause. It is non-restrictive because the fact that she is beautiful in a soprano is extra information. If the writer wanted to emphasize these facts as the motivation for stalking, they would use a subordinating conjunction such as because instead to create a stronger relationship between the two ideas. Number four. The sentence begins with a dependent clause that tells why they gave the reward. Use a comma for this opening adverbial clause. We have three subject-verb combinations here. Boy stuck, citizens gave, and he saved. The third clause interrupts the second, so we have to look at how they are joined. There is nothing between them, so we should suspect an implied relative pronoun. It's a restrictive clause telling which town specifically the town he saved, not just some random town. So, since it narrows the group of potential towns down to a single one, it's restrictive and doesn't have commas around it. Number five. In this sentence, the first dependent clause identifies which specific trooper arises as a ghost. Not just anyone becomes the headless horseman. So we need the information in the clause. No commas. As a ghost is a prepositional phrase that tells in what manner he arose. The word as can be both a preposition and a subordinated conjunction. We know it's a preposition here because it doesn't have a subject-verb combination with it. Who carries a jack-o'-lantern identifies what kind of ghost. It's a key part of that sentence's meaning, so no commas. We know we need it because the adverb clause at the end of the sentence modifies carries, telling when. And since the adverb clause follows the verb it modifies, we don't put a comma in front of it. Number six. The independent clause has an object complement noun. Let's figure this out. Greeks considered who? Prometheus. But since Prometheus is the subject of tricked, the correct direct object is whom, which stands in for Prometheus as a relative pronoun. The Greeks consider whom what? The savior, a noun that renames or identifies the direct object and is the focus of the sentence. The relative clause provides extra information about Prometheus. It doesn't point out which specific Prometheus under discussion, so it's a non-restrictive clause, and it needs commas on both sides. The next dependent clause is adverbial, beginning with the subordinating conjunction so that and telling why he tricked Zeus. When the independent clause follows the clause whose verb it modifies, we don't put a comma in front of the adverb clause. The final dependent clause begins with the relative pronoun that and identifies which specific animals, so no commas for this restrictive adjective clause. Number seven. Because the relative clause identifies which snake struck, 
Limiting the possibilities to this specific one is restrictive and doesn't take commas. Similarly, the second relative clause identifies the specific plant involved, not just any plant, so no commas around it either. The sentence ends with an adjective clause, beginning with the relative adverb when and describing which minutes. There are a few clues here to let you know that when isn't a subordinating conjunction forming an adverb clause telling when it struck. The progressive verb tense would require the use of while to be logical. Also, the few minutes sets up the need for further elaboration. Which few minutes? Number eight. The first relative clause provides extra information about Anansi, his motivation. It is not essential in understanding which Anansi, so we put commas on both sides. Before he set a trap tells when he sought the advice. So since this adverb clause follows the verb it modifies, we don't use a comma. The sentence ends with a clear subject-verb combination, but no conjunction or punctuation to join it to the rest of the sentence. So we should suspect and test for an implied relative pronoun. That stands in for creatures as the direct object. The entire clause narrows the creatures to the specific ones involved, so no comma in front of that clause. We use that rather than whom because the antecedent is identified specifically as non-human. Number nine, the relative clause, who was angry, provides extra information and doesn't limit the subject to a specific Shiva. There's only one in Hindu mythology, so we use commas on both sides. However, the dependent clause itself is modified by another dependent clause, in this case an adverbial one, so the concluding comma goes at the end of the clause rather than after angry. Otherwise, the because clause is cut off from the word that it modifies. Starting with the relative pronoun when, the next dependent clause identifies which moment, so it is adjectival. We keep the comma at the end because the independent clause comes after the coordinating conjunction and begins with a long modifier telling when the subject formed. Number 10. The first independent clause is the sword proved him worthy. Worthy is the object complement adjective because it describes the direct object, him. Interrupting this clause is another subject-verb combination, Arthur pulled from the stone. Since there isn't a conjunction or punctuation joining this clause with an independent one, we check for an implied relative pronoun. That stands in for sword and begins a relative clause that tells what kind of sword. It is restricting the potential group of swords to a specific one, not just any sword in Britain, so no commas. Then we have the coordinating conjunction but with a comma to join the two independent clauses. Once he was in power is an adverbial clause, starting with the subordinating conjunction once, so we need a comma after it. People, the subject of turned and plotted, is modified by a restrictive relative clause that identifies which specific people supported him. Therefore, no commas around it. Number 11. The independent clause is, an onswang infiltrated the village on the day. It may sound a bit awkward, but remember that in real terms, all the words that modify the complete subject and complete predicate in a clause are part of that clause. So technically, the independent clause includes all of the three dependent clauses here. Which disguised itself as a beautiful woman provides non-essential information about the Aswang. We know that if the writer intended for this clause to be restrictive, they would have used that as the relative pronoun instead of which. Therefore, we enclose the clause in commas. Starting with the relative adverb when, the second dependent clause describes the specific day. It modifies the noun in front of it, which just happens to be the object of a preposition. The third dependent clause specifies which local leader died, so we need to remove the comma. Number 12. The independent clause in this sentence is simply, the chimera died. The subject chimera has an appositive that provides interesting but unnecessary information so it requires commas on both sides. However, as in sentence 10, the appositive itself has a relative clause modifying it, telling what kind of creature. So the comma goes at the end of the adjective clause, modifying the appositive, rather than in front of it. The next dependent clause is adverbial, beginning with the subordinating conjunction when and telling when it died. Since this clause follows the verb it modifies, we don't separate it with a comma. The entire clause is when the lump of lead at the end of the spear melted and poured down its throat, and it is interrupted by a relative clause describing which specific spear the subject Bellerophon used. The subject verb combination of Bellerophon thrust into its mouth isn't joined to the rest of the sentence with a conjunction or punctuation, so we need to test for an implied relative pronoun. That would stand in for spear, 
and therefore function as the direct object in its clause. Because this relative clause is restrictive, limiting all the spear choices to this specific one with a lump of lead on its tip, no commas. Melted and poured are compound verbs and share lump as their subject, so we don't separate them with a comma. If you have further questions about a specific word or structure or punctuation rule from this exercise, be sure to meet with your teacher to ask them.